Bernard Shari, mode selector. Hello. Hello. So. so, wir müssen jetzt hier Englisch sprechen. Wir zeigen euch jetzt den ostdeutschen Dialekt. Hi. Hi, I feel. Can you, can you, can you translate for me? Uh, what? <laughs> Well, I thought and rather than giving, um, you know, kind of a CV style interview, I thought we'd kind of focus on some key elements and, and also give um, the audience the opportunity to, to basically ask you as many questions in the time that we have. Yes. Cool. So just to give a bit of context, um, you know, you both grew up in former East Germany, yeah? For those of us who weren't around, can you tell us a bit about what was it like growing up at that time and what impact do you think growing up at that time has on your earlier part of your career? And looking back, do you think it was significant to your career today? Yeah, actually, um, I think uh, I forgot everything. <laughs> I just remember my childhood, so I was playing a lot in the woods and um, I liked uh, animals and soccer and everything. I think the important part uh, was when the wall came down. So my wall came down story is that I needed to go to my piano teacher. So I had piano lessons every week and I got forced to go there and the piano was in a church. So I needed to go once a week to the church to my teacher, Herr Gericke. And exactly the day when the wall came down, I had piano lessons. And I was a bad piano player, so... <laughs> and, yeah, before we started, the phone was ringing, and he picked up the phone. It was uh, this old-school phones on the wall, so we picked up the phone, and he said, yes, ah, yes, yes. And, he and then he left the room. And I was there, still, sitting, waiting for him for an hour. After an hour, I said, okay, now I go home. And when I, uh, when I went home, my parents told me, okay, the wall is down. And my teacher actually, he disappeared on this day. He never came back. So I was just the happiest person on earth that I don't need to go to this piano lessons anymore. So the wall was not important for me. It was just more about um, that he's gone. Yeah, and then the whole thing started. So Shari is uh, from the same neighborhood. So we, are, we almost grew up together. So we went together to the same school. He's older than me, four years. And yeah, he was always the cool guy. And I was the little wannabe. <laughs> and he started making parties in empty warehouses. Because in the, in the outskirts of Berlin, there were all the big factories for concrete, concrete and like chemistry. They, there were a lot of fabrics and they all got, they, they shut down and they were empty and he started making parties there and he DJed there and he had a 909 and he was like God, you know. And um, I wanted to be like him. And now I'm cooler. <laughs> Apparently. We shall see, we can debate that, we can debate that. So where did you get the 909 from? Not from eBay. Um, <laughs> I bought a 909 in, two uh, in 2000, in 1992. Um, by phone call from a um, from a store in uh, Bavaria, so I think everybody knows. We still have it. We are still touring with the 909, actually. Oh, wonderful! Yeah. And in the, in those days, you, your your setup was the 909 and playing records in sync, kind of. Setup was um, very classical Atari computer, Atari ST 1024. Yeah. ST, of course. Yeah. ST or STE. Come on, man. Let's go. Bro. How much yeah. meg? Let's break it down. Was it half meg, one meg? Um, Atari, uh, Juno 106, 909, 808, Sync Boxes, TB303, Emax One, uh, it's Emo Systems, Emax One sampler. And no, no reverb. It just was just going direct into a mixer, making distortions by turning up gains. And it um, was fun. And I recorded everything on tape. 
And about four months ago, I started to uh, make to to make an archive. Of my old tapes it was. Okay, I need to tell. He recorded, I think. I don't know, 130 tracks, like four four hours music back in the days. And the, it's it's recorded in a period from 92 till 94, I think, or 95. And um, he, uh, yeah, he digitalized all the music. And um, when he did that, it took weeks. So he occupied the studio every day with recording, just in real time. And uh, a friend of us, also from the east side, Marcel Detman, is a resident DJ at Berghain, he came in and he was like, oh, what's that? Or in German, oh, was denn Ditte? <laughs> and uh, very old school archive, sounds like a old school reflex compilation. Okay. So it's, it's really funny. And um, yeah, so we have a kind of a retrospective period right now. So we are listening to all this music and um, but it's it's old are you going to um, will it be available for us at some point yeah maybe uh, we are we don't we are not sure about that so we, we don't know also he don't know he, he he needs to decide it's his stuff it's okay. not mode selector it's sure. fundamental knowledge <laughs> that was the name of the project yes sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I hear you are familiar with the Academy yeah tell us about your last experience in, in that night in 2010 in London, we, when we went to the Red Bull Music Academy, <laughs> um, it was a night when the son of one of the innovators of Wolf was born. Yes. Yeah, his son, his son got born yes. and we played the party, but so we were not part of the whole um, workshops, but we played for them this night and yeah, one of the main guys uh, became a father this night. And we recorded a track with uh, Todd Osborne together and 10 kids we <laughs> never saw before. And we were in a room with all this equipment. Oh. And Shari was in the end almost naked, singing in a vocoder, always the name of, the, of Wolf's son, Jacob. Jacob. Yeah. Jacob. Jacob. And it's re it, it, this song got released on this Red Bull compilation they do after every... Uh, I yeah. actually think it's on this compilation here, right? We have some... I, yeah. I think that's the one before. Not the Madrid one. But the, s mm -hmm. the, the song in total was, I think, 40 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so it ended up in six minutes or something. But it was a long session. It was really funny. So uh, OK. So I can see from, your, from, from looking at your um, career that you know, collaborating is a, a very big thing of yours. So this designed it, Fad Fadrai. Fad Fundrai. Fad Fundrai. Yeah. Is that right? Fad yeah, Fundrai. Almost. <laughs> You've been working with them for a long time. Yeah. Uh, early part. Can you tell us a little bit they about They come from the same neighborhood. Okay. So, so in terms of why, why was it important to work for them then? And why, you know, what has kept your relationship and collaboration going after all these years? Actually, when we met them, we didn't uh, make any listenable music. So we, uh, we were just friends with them. And we had a little studio in the same house with them. So we were sharing the space with them and we did a party back in the days it started in 1998 at a little club in Berlin called Kovenstar and this party was called Lab Style and we did that every week actually we booked Red Snapper one day <laughs> and it was for maybe 80 people there it was really small and um, yeah we had always the concept with 50% visuals and 50% music and they started creating visuals live visuals and we started playing live together and since then we are married with them so and yeah. not only do they do your, you do your visuals as well and your artwork the whole creative side of things and if, if, do you leave it up to them or do you have an input actually they are part of mode selector they decide how it looks so if we tell them that it's shit then we get in trouble so mm -hmm. I mean <laughs> it's always their cup of tea so okay so they created everything they they are the the optical face of our music mm -hmm. so looking back is, is there any kind of high significant uh, high points in your collaboration that you can think with of? them yeah mm. in 2009 we released a record called moderat together with our friend apparat the band is called moderat and that was the first time where we worked conceptual wise so we produced music and they were part of the production and they created the pictures for the song, so we have for each song of this album a video, a clip. 
and that was the first time that we did something together. So I think that was a very important step for all of us. And um, yeah, it was next level then. I'm sure. It was not just uh, playing freestyle sessions and do some nice visuals. So it was like conceptual wise. And I think since then we work like this. And in terms of developing um, that way of working, um, can you remember if the music inspired the, vid uh, the visual or vice versa? Was it a, mi a mix of, was it just a free for all? <laughs> It's always it's always the question what which 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 was first the egg or the Indeed. chicken mm -hmm. I th I th I know it was the cock he was first <laughs> but you know we cannot tell it's a process sure. it's a it's a pain in the ass it's not funny it's a lot of work and it's not funny but yeah it's funny but it's a means to an end yeah of course I like the idea that you've been collaborating has been part of your makeup from from day one not only from the visual aspect but also from a vocal tip. Considering you don't like lyrics, and considering you don't like, you know, um, how important is having vocalists to the music that you've made? I think it was a uh, process also. When we worked the first time with the vocalist, it was with a French band called TTC. They are not existing anymore. And um, we, we don't speak French, but we used their vocals and we changed the words in some weird orders. We used to use vocals in a very rhythmic way, so we, ju we didn't saw the content, we saw just the, the, the waveform. Mm -hmm. That was the first step and then we got more and more into it and we are, we are not writing lyrics and we don't want to write lyrics and um, all the people we worked with, all the singers and MCs, they, uh, that, was, that all came up by coincidence, so it was, we, never, we, we were never sending out some demos. And mm -hmm. so was always freestyle. And in, t in terms of your choice of vocalist, um, is it freestyle as well, how you choose people? We, we are traveling a lot and we meet all these great people always and, you know, um, small talk on, on one side but uh, make something happen on the other side. So it's, it's always, it's always uh, uh, interesting in, so to work with other people, to get inspired. It's all about inspiration always, so. So you look always for inspiration, and if you have someone who has something to say in, in, during the production or creation of music, and it's, it's not Chari because we are like one person, you know, so it's, diff it's always very refreshing and uh, fun and, yeah, an adventure. Most of the collaborations of late have been more an online process. I think 70% of the collaborations we did, we did via the internet, and um, the rest we did in person. So now we have a studio with recording booth and vocal booth and a mixer. What's that? <laughs> oh, we can get Man, to that. If you would see our mixer we used in the last couple of years, that's, it doesn't even look like a mixer anymore. And we are sending all the inputs via mini jack cable. <laughs> Still. Oh, we can <laughs> Still. No, no, no. We can, oh, no, we, we can talk about this interface, no interface thing, perhaps another time. But looking at you know, going into um, you know equipment and and uh, the, the technical side of things, um, you know as you said earlier on, you know from the 909 days um, in the early 90s, I guess um, the live aspect of of your work has been fundamental, I guess. Can you talk us through how the live setup has evolved? Um, I guess from a performance aspect, but also from a technical aspect. Our studio work and our work on stage was always very different. On stage we are using two computers, a mixer and a lot of little things and we don't use Ableton Live and some other uh, commercial platforms. So we have our own self-made customized um, Max MSP patch. So and we used that since the beginning, so, and... Um, what, so you, had, you, used, you were using Jihad back in the early... Yeah, that yeah. developed over the years. Mm -hmm. Now, well, we are needed to get in contact with Cycling74, that's the company who runs Max MSP, and they uh, are yeah, helping us out to uh, jump over to Max 6, so we are still working with Max 4, so it's like um, seven years in between the two versions, and... Um, is that because you're lazy or just because, you know, as in you're, you've got the tools that you need, you don't need to change? Or? No. We hate updating software. <laughs> it's a, 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 smart, a smart old man teached us once, uh, never change a running system. 
Well, it's quite difficult in the days of, uh, you know, software up systems upgrades and uh, all the possibilities, quote unquote, you know. So you are running the latest version of Max now, you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, I mean, so has your setup changed much in the, in the time that you've performed? Yeah, that's yeah. the basic, but mm. it changed. We, we always changed the controller and uh, effects and drum machines. 909, for example. The, the good thing is with this Max MSP patch, you can change it. So when we get a new controller, we change the patch for the controller. So. Oh, you've only just finished the song in the studio? Yeah, just today, just yeah. four hours ago, in okay. Logic. <laughs> so if you want to see it, we can put it here on the screen. If Would you like that? Sorry, would you like that? Yeah. yeah. When you're using your live uh, MSP patch, are you using VST effects in that patch? Yeah. Yeah. So Razer and Massive and all that stuff. No synthesizers. No synthesizers. No experiments. So that's uh, analog then normally. Yeah. Okay. So if we use a synthesizer, we use them analog. Der Track aus, so how it looks. Boring track arrangement. Bass drum. K uh, click drum. <laughs> Another high hat. That's a session we did with a little FM synthesizer from the early 2000s. Not really for girls. Yeah. And this the song is for a, a compilation. We have a we have make every year compilation called Mode Selection, and um, we ask friends, befriended artists from all over the world, if they want to be part of it with an exclusive track and. Um, they actually uh, delivered the music a week ago on deadline and we were the... <laughs> you were the last. Yeah, and the mastering was today, so we needed to do something and uh, yeah. It's for the big sound systems. It's for a big sound system, indeed. Yeah. That sounds good, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so have you got a name already? Thank you. Uh, Mike the Chicken. So, Monkey Town, you created Monkey Town because... We had a contract with a record label a long time, Beepage Control, and uh, we just wanted to do our own thing on one point, and then the financial crisis was the perfect circumstance to start a record label these days, and um, yeah, I think, it, I think it works out. It doesn't matter about all the economy, so it's more about, um, yeah, continuing. I think that's also the true spirit of electronic music or techno it's like never stop this shit so it's like it, that's why you know i mean we made a lot of music we made music with apparat we made music with tdc with otto von schirach with tom york with so many people 
who are coming from different camps, but deep, in, deep inside we are still looking for the magic loop, you know, like what electronic music is. And I think that's also our philosophy. So we never, we never give up. And I think that's the only thing uh, which is uh, important. And um, yeah, we started Monkey Town and then we got so much feedback from other artists and we created a second label, 50 Weapons. And um, so we have a more uh, a club oriented record label, which is this one, 50 Weapons. And then we have Monkey Town, which is more uh, colorful. That's crazy. It's started very chaotic and now we um, have an office. Oh, good. I can show you one of the tracks from the Edison Groove LP. He's one of my heroes. Needed to be a triple 12 inch just because the 808 has three colors on their pattern. So our music taste is pretty much bass orientated. <laughs> this track shows exactly why. It's called Bad Things and it's featuring Spankrock. Let's get into some real bad things. 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 Let's Yo. <laughs> For what? I <laughs> just want to know uh, when you run with your machine, your system, um, how you record? Because you don't use like software, so you don't, I think you don't use any more tape or not every time. So. It depends. Also we, we are recording with a computer mainly, but um, he bought a tape machine and sometimes he's recording on tape. And we tried to find the old school saturated Moody Man house sound, but doesn't work out that well. So, I mean, in the end, you know, everybody's cooking his tea with water. You can use what you want. It's all about the creativity. Fuck expensive equipment, you know, it's just about the tune. That's it. I mean, m for example, Mala, yeah? Mala, Digital Mystics Mala, maybe you heard of him. He's, for me, my hero in, in terms of dubstep. And he's, he, for me, he's the real one. And he's recording all his music with one program, with um, your propeller heads, what's that called? Reason. Yeah, he's, all, he's doing all his tracks with Reason. The, the biggest tunes made by Benga, uh, or the first big tunes, uh, he did that with a PlayStation. So, doesn't matter. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, thanks. Warum heißen wir Mozelektor? It's actually, it's actually a select button for Tape Echo, Roland Tape Echo, and when we made the, the first official remix, we doesn't even exist under the name Mode Selector at this time, and we made a remix for a band, um, and uh, they asked us, uh, what's your band name, and that was the first thing he saw, and said, yeah, Mode Selector. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> but it has also a very deep sense. Mode selector. Okay, so what's um, what, what does the next couple of months, uh, six months, look like for you? So yeah, touring, having fun, release nice music, uh, and uh, try to relax. Yes. <laughs> indeed. Well, on that, mode selector. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.